So now that we've talked about the structure and functionality of Rancher at Lock, and I've shown you the key methods, let's take a really cool look at an example of this lock used in practice. And the particular way we're going to look at it is in the context of a Java synchronized queue called Array Blocking Queue. So it's a very common class that's used in message passing based programs. You can use it for things like thread pools. You can use it for message passing, producer consumer style problems, and so on. And what Array Blocking Queue is, it's a blocking bounded FIFO queue. So blocking means if the queue is empty, the calling thread that's trying to get an item will block or take an item will block. If the queue is full, then a call that's trying to put an item in the queue will block, trying to put an item will block. So it's blocking and bounded means that you can only have n items in the queue. And FIFO means it's first in, first out. This particular class implements or extends the abstract queue class, which is a helper class that's used by other queues in Java. And it implements the blocking queue interface. We're going to take a look at both the interface and the implementation of this class. It's really cool. And it shows off a bunch of things starting today with Rantrant Lock. So if you look at the implementation of this class, which you can, you can grab from the open source implementation of Java, uh, you'll see that it has a bunch of fields. And it's got a lock called lock, which is a Rantrant Lock, that's used to guard access to those fields to make sure that they are not going to be corrupted by multiple threads. Here are the fields themselves. We have the array that stores the items in the queue. We have the indices that keep track of where the next item will go to put it in there, where the next item will go to take it out of the queue, so put and take index. And we keep track of the number of items in the queue as a count. These fields don't have to be defined as volatile because they're protected by this Rantrant lock. So defining them as volatile would be completely pointless because we're going to protect them in a different way by using the lock. And this Rantrant lock has the side effect of not only handling atomicity, but it also handles visibility and ordering. So all those things are taken care of for you. So here's basically what we're going to do. We're going to have uh, a new array blocking queue created with a count of 10 to start with. And it's going to be a blocking queue of strings. And thread T1 will call the take method on this queue. Of course, it'll block because there's nothing in the queue yet. So I've kind of visualized this. On the right-hand side, I'll show you the code. On the left-hand side, I'll show you a little visualization. So here's the array blocking queue. When take is called, we're going to basically try to get into the critical section. And as you can see here, we're going to call lock interruptibly. And we will get into the critical section. And the count will have been 0. That's how we got in, because there was nobody owning it. And by calling lock interruptibly, that's going to increment the hold count by 1. So now the hold count is 1. So when we call take in, so, so thread t1, this is thread t1 called take. Now we're going to see thread t2. So thread t2, same, same scenario, right? It's got the, the same um, queue that we're working off of. We're working off that, that bounded queue. Thread t2 is going to call take. And that, of course, is going to have to block, because it can't get in the critical section, because thread t1 is already in the critical section. So when it calls the lock interruptibly method, this will block. So when t1 is finished, right? so I'll, when we talk about condition objects, I'll show you what, how this actually works under the hood. But let's assume we've, we've got an item put in the queue, and now we're going to go ahead and and uh, return that item, and we're going to unlock the lock on the way out. So when thread t1 finishes, it unlocks the lock. Note that t2 is still blocked here. And that will decrement the count by 1, because it, it was 0 before. Then we locked it, it was 1. Now we unlocked it, it goes back to 0. And that will then allow that lock to be released. And that thread will then go ahead and exit the critical section. And we use the finally block with the try finally to ensure the lock is always released. OK, now that we've released the lock and thread t2 has gone away, sorry, thread t1 has gone away, thread t2 can now get in the critical section. And it will increment the count from 0 to 1, because it was 0. So that's basically the protocol here. So you don't get in the critical section as long as someone else owns the lock. Once someone owns the lock, you get a chance to be in the critical section. Any questions about that? I think that's pretty straightforward. 
When we talk about condition objects, which will be next week at this point, you'll see how they work in conjunction with a lock, and you can use them to do something called guarded suspension. And guarded suspension basically says, while this condition is not satisfied, right? While, while the count is equal to zero, um, and, and the condition we want to be satisfied is greater than zero. So while there aren't any items in the queue, await there to be items in the queue. And this is what's called a uh, guarded suspension. So we suspend ourselves on this condition, and we don't get a chance to go through this guard until the condition is to our liking, until the count is greater than zero. We'll talk about that later. And this particular implementation implements the guarded suspension pattern and the whole thing, plus the other methods involved, like the put method, implement the so-called monitor object pattern, which is a good old uh, POSA2 pattern, the book that I wrote years ago. OK, so that's the end of the overview of the example application. This example, again, just focused on the Rantrit lock protocol. We will talk about the condition object protocol 